What is going on guys, Bisectatron here, bringing you guys today's video. Dark Avengers vs. 50 Spartans, and we're recapping a perfect war, guys. Um, I was alerted to this by one of my clan mates, so I decided to head on over, check out this war, because it's an impressive feat. We have Town Hall 10s, 11s, and 12s in this war, as we often see in the breakdown. And I just wanted to give a shout out to... Uh, the people over at Dark Avengers and give them a recap here because it was an awesome war. Uh, they did not even use one of their last attacks. Let me see who it was. Uh, looks like, yeah, one of their Town Hall 11s, I want to say. Uh, yeah, didn't uh, attack. And this was a dip war, so um, there were some uh, dips being used, but still, um, pulling off, especially the top three Town Hall 12s. Uh, gain them all three starred uh, very impressive so we're gonna look at some highlights today I think we're gonna start at the bottom actually and work our way up just to mix it up a little bit um, a lot of people like this strategy this is the quad quake queen charge la loon at town hall 10 a lot of people like this strategy and uh, it works well so it drops down the quakes um, just for time reasons I would have Drop you know the wizard first, then the minions, then the queen, then drop the earthquakes, because um, it, I think this was a pretty close time wise on the attack, and you can see fast forward. Um, I mean this really took quite a while. I mean we're down to the queen wasn't even dropped for the first 30, 40 seconds of the attack. So just keep that in mind, guys. You want to be quick. You always want to be conscious of time. Uh, that's one of your biggest enemies at any town hall level, any attack. Um, but especially as you get to higher town hall levels. Town hall 10, you can get away with this a little bit more. Um, as you get higher up, the bases get bigger. It's just harder to get everything taken out in the three minutes you have. So, yeah, anyway, actually, that reminds me. There was a time when we had three minutes and 30 seconds, then they took that away. They added it very briefly and uh, changed back. So... Just something that I was reminded of, and that was kind of a weird little uh, period of time in the game. Um, but anyway, the uh, the queen comes in, takes out uh, what she needs to get, mostly the defensive queen, CC, uh, grabs a couple ADs, and she'll continue through the base here. Nice thing is the, uh, the slammer and everything is going to keep her in the base, going to funnel her up into the rest of the defenses. Earthquakes open to everything up, go times two here, hounds cut across. Loon's coming through with the hastes, and this one uh, goes for a pretty comfortable three-star. Uh, the slammer looks like it's not even going to, well, that Tesla might grab it. Let's see. Yeah, very end, the balloons come out, so I guess they won't stay for the next attack in there, but uh, very good stuff, and we will move along here. Uh, one more Town Hall 10 to take a look at. Uh, let's see, number 21. This was a cool attack, uh, glad I'm showing this. And there was a couple um, of these types of attacks with the baby dragons and the uh, the bat spells. And honestly, I think on this type of base, the bat or the baby dragons are, it's kind of a flashy thing having 20 baby dragons, but that easily could have just been 10 regular dragons. What's really working here is the bat spells. That's what's getting the value because these single infernos just can't deal with them, they get overpowered. Um, and we, we saw at Town Hall 10 as I was skimming through the attacks, a lot of Laloon, um, Queen Charge Lalo is a big one, but Sui Hero, Small Kill Squad, stuff like that as well. Um, and then some of these types of attacks uh, with either Baby Dragons or Dragons, but if you have a base that has two single Infernos, just use the Bat Spell in some way. Uh, typically you're gonna wanna pair it with just regular dragons um, that's pretty uh, foolproof uh, way of attacking but anyway everything moving through here and then the slammer I think a good choice sending it in because all the uh, all the wizard towers are in the core of the base so the important thing for the slammer to do is uh, help support the bats and get in there and you know start taking out those uh, those wizard towers making sure the baby dragons get the full uh, push through the base here so uh, freezes the wizard tower bats cutting across and a ton of baby dragons on the outside there. We'll fast forward, because I think uh, something hit the bats, they died somehow, um, but there was a ton of baby dragons still left up, so that will do it. 
Um, nice attack, kind of a cool army composition to see working here. And uh, let's move on to the next one. Uh, some Town Hall 11 action for you guys. Going up to number 5, and there was just a ton of drag bat at Town Hall 11, and that's what I've been using. So um, it was kind of cool to see that you know they're definitely having success with it as well. Not just me that's uh, really hooked on the drag bat uh, at Town Hall 11. Uh, works pretty well. So one thing I liked, using the two giants to uh, you know, keep the queen healthy this way. She's gonna come all the way around and start to take these buildings out because there's just nothing here to really target her besides like one cannon along the way. And fortunately, she does go the correct way. Uh, that's the the ideal way for her to go there. So everything coming through. Um, Slammer is with the dragons. There's really nothing else it has to be used for. That's one way I often differ from other attackers with this army. It's often I'm using the slammer opposite side of the base tank a wizard tower or something like that. Um, but I guess here it wasn't really necessary because you'll see the uh, bats are deployed directly on the back end here. There they go. A um, little bit close here because the sweeper combined with the uh, wizard tower and inferno not being directly next to each other forces the double freeze. So sometimes that's a good idea to have at least two freeze spells because often you have to freeze a second time if something doesn't go perfectly. Um, so a good freeze to make sure the Inferno went down to the bats and uh, plenty of troops left up. That tornado is really annoying if it catches your bats because it kills all of them. Uh, so in general, you want to keep your troops separate from your bats. Uh, don't deploy like your slammer and your bats in the exact same spot. But um, in this case, they were just meeting up because those were the last few uh, defenses left up because uh, this base was totally crushed. Nice attack, too costly. And um, we'll take a look at one more Town Hall 11 attack here. Okay, so number four. We got a little bit of a Electron style attack here. Um, it was hard to find one that wasn't Drag Bat, but I wanted to mix it up because I know you guys have been seeing so many uh, dragon attacks and Pekka Bow Bat and just everything Bat spell. I wanted to mix it up um, a little bit and not only show Drag Bat at Town Hall 11 here. Um, so this is something I've been I've been liking. Queen, King just to take out a small chunk of the base. This works really well at Town Hall 12 also. Um, hit the King's ability, Queen's gonna come down, grab the cannon, Wizard Tower, and uh, we'll see here that uh, the next step is going to be just fast forward, a few test loons, then boom, there's the slammer. And this is a uh, ambitious thing for the slammer here because it has to come pretty far into the base to get a lot of that value. The queen, the eagle is all very far back. And I can't recall if that he actually gets that taken out here or not. Um, but, you know, hitting tornado, um, just a ton of stuff. Goes ahead and clones, and if you drop a clone right away, you're going to clone the balloons which can be a good thing and a bad thing. Um, I think it's better to clone the E-Drag, but you know that's not always an option. So anyway, I don't think the Eagle actually is going to go down here, but gets the Queen, which is just as important, if not more important, uh, for this attack. It's probably more important. Um, and you can see the pathing is going to lead them directly into the Eagle once that little top section of the base has been taken out. Nice early Warden's ability just to keep everything up uh, over the uh, Eagle and other uh, defenses in that area and then there's going to be enough balloons on the back end to kind of mop things up. Tons of Lava Hounds still up, haste spells are down and uh, yeah crushed the base, nice attack there. Uh, time for some Town Hall 12 action and like I said um, only three Town Hall 12s in this war on either side so it was you know not a whole lot of uh, of room for error, especially when there was dips being used, so you know, very limited in terms of attacks. But I, I, they were able to make it work and get the uh, the perfect war by you know hitting pretty well uh, percentage-wise at Town Hall 12, uh, getting more triples than not. And uh, this one was a a nice queen charge hog attack, and this is a type of base that I'm sure you guys often see all the time. Uh, not this exact base, maybe, but. It's a, it's a common one to have the town hall and like have that big gap in the middle with the town hall on the outside. It's almost two different base segments put together. Then you have the CC and some other stuff in the middle here. Um, but let's take a look at this one because the queen 
Uh, it's just gonna charge right in here. It doesn't come directly at the town hall, which is a good idea because then you're splitting the, all these infernos, so the healers are gonna get picked off. There's gonna be a ton of traps. It's just a very awkward way to enter. Um, the base is set up that way to make it difficult to charge in directly at the town hall. Um, so instead coming uh, from the side and that really allows the uh, defenses to be taken out one at a time here and then a nice jump spell to finally access that town hall because the queen otherwise uh, is not in the correct compartment to take it out. So she'll continue to work through. Another rage is down. Um, that warden is able to take her very low. You gotta be careful of the warden on a queen charge. Uh, he will take out your queen quickly because he's he does a ton of damage actually at level 40 and it's all in like a very short burst because um, he doesn't shoot that frequently so uh, that was a, a good uh, adjustment using the ability and then the queen's going to be able to take out the town hall which actually doesn't do that much damage to her it's mainly the healers it's going to pick off here um, so she gets it just before she dies and then that's pretty much all that was needed from the queen now it's up to the hogs and the warden to kind of push through here, waiting on a nice Warden's ability coming up. Uh, goes ahead and I would have used the Warden's ability first and the heal spell second, um, just because the Warden's ability is uh, it's able to keep up every hog, so you want to use it when you have more hogs total. Uh, but this was fine as well. I think it covers a giant bomb here, or maybe not, there is no giant bomb. Uh, but it, it kind of covers them for uh, the last few defenses, and then they have there's enough hogs to deal with the king at the very end. So fast forwarding here, sends in the miner to help, and uh, yeah, not easy to take out level 65 king. You gotta have enough hogs at the end uh, to take him out if you don't already have him down uh, as part of the uh, queen charge or whatever else you're doing. All right, one more attack to take a look at here. Number two, um, and then this one was a, uh, it was just basically a, uh, Pekka Bobat, um, but had a nice E-Dragon funnel, which I'm a huge fan of. If you can use the E-Dragon uh, well to funnel, um, it can get a ton of value. It can get defenses taken out, and it gets often more buildings than like a Pekka might otherwise do. Um, it just takes a little bit more of a troop investment, but it's, it's going to be worth it most of the time. So uh, good value there, and that's why uh, defensively I always make sure my trash buildings are not connected within a tile of you know stuff inside the base and allowing that chain damage to really get very far you want to have like a two tile uh, barrier a moat separating the exterior buildings from the buildings on the inside or even the buildings on the outside that are happen to be defenses you got to keep that stuff separate uh, one thing I like these three hogs a test that does pop so they don't quite um, get that far but they get the archer tower down I think it might have been four hogs even they get that archer tower down, which is very important, and the reason why is it's going to push everything to continue to go through the base, because otherwise the bowlers and everything might try to go up and target that archer tower had it still been up. Because it's down, they continue through, and really, in any attack, it comes down to funneling. You can break down any attack to funneling. That's one of the most basic aspects of attacking, one of the first things you got to learn, but it continues to be the most important thing and kind of separates good attackers from great attackers is how well you can funnel here. Um, so here come the bats. Probably could have froze the inferno as well with that freeze on the wizard tower, but plays it safe. The queen takes out the inferno, so all is good. And then the bats will come through and kind of get these last few buildings. Fortunately, the queen comes back for the town hall. That could have been a little bit risky had the queen not uh, gone for the town hall, but she does gets it taken out and makes it a three star instead of a one star here. She actually hits the uh, Giga Tesla explosion I think at the end. And then these last few bats barely get the uh, Archer Tower because it retargeted onto the P.E.K.K.A.s there. So this was a very close attack. You'll see the King's gonna come out, starts to just, you know, destroy the Queen, the P.E.K.K.A.s, all that. But there's minions up, there's stuff that he can't target. So. Uh, in the end, it's closed, but these archers come in, the minions come in, and they barely get that taken out as they're hitting all these bombs and whatnot. So, nice attack, uh, great war once again to Dark Avengers, uh, gain the perfect war, and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the recap. Thanks for watching, I'll see you guys next time. Isectatron out.